it's time for your mix of movers and shakers, of doers and makers. It's time for Funko Fun Chat. Today's guest, she's the voice of Ahsoka Tano and Cheetah from DC Superhero Girls. It's Ashley Eckstein. I'm Ashley Eckstein. I am from Orlando, Florida, and I'm most known as the voice of Ahsoka Tano in Star Wars. I sense something, Master, and I don't like it. Ooh, you know, it's definitely Disney's Hollywood Studios. Um, and it's not necessarily because of, of Star Wars. I mean, now it is, um, but that was actually my first job. Uh, the day I turned 16, I became a Disney cast member, and I went into entertainment, uh, and they assigned me to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Well, you know, a lot of people might not realize that I was cast as Ahsoka to just be myself. Originally, they wanted Ahsoka to have an Icelandic accent, but um, Dave Filoni was watching me in between takes, and, uh, you know, I did, at the time, really practice my Icelandic, and I thought I did a good job. <laughs> and then he raised his hand, he was like, no, can you, you know, give us something more Icelandic? And so I raised my hand and I said, I'm sorry, but I am doing Icelandic. I don't know what you want. Well, normally I would never talk back to the director, but that actually got me the part. Oh. Because Ahsoka is snippy, and I guess I managed to be snippy, but not bratty. I'm not going to take the fall for something I didn't do. In fact, even in the early days, they would record our faces um, for the animators. And so some of my expressions are even on Ahsoka. So oh, really? my husband will watch it. He'll be like, I've seen that face before. I gave my heart and soul to Ahsoka, but then Ahsoka just became this icon and she inspires me now. Like, I just strive to be a real life version of Ahsoka Tano every single day. And so um, I'm inspired by Ahsoka now. I would say it was definitely The Little Mermaid uh, Jody with Jodie Benson. Benson. Yeah. So I think it was my seventh or eighth birthday, I think seventh. And my dad was a Disney cast member. And so they asked cast members to bring, if they had kids, to bring them to a screening of The Little Mermaid. This was before it was out. There was still actually um, storyboards in the film, like black and white storyboards. And they wanted to get our reaction to see if we liked it. And um, getting a peek behind the curtain like that, that's when I first understood that there was a person behind the, like, the voice of the character, that it wasn't actually a mermaid in the screen. And um, so, you know, I was fascinated by acting and wanted to be an actress, but at that moment I realized I also want to be a voice actress. I had had a character uh, that I played on That's So Raven on the Disney Channel. I played Muffy, and she wasn't very nice there either. But she talked like this. She's like, Alana says that she likes San Diego Comic-Con. <laughs> The whole world lasts with her. Okay. <laughs> and so I decided to bring that to Cheetah. So Cheetah sounded more like, oh, I'm gonna take a cat nap in the sunshine. Fear not, citizens, Cheetah's here. And so you just have fun with it. I think with voiceover, you make bold choices because you know people can't see you. Sometimes if you feel like you're like you're kind of emoting too big it's often not big enough because you have to get through that microphone then onto the screen. And so, yeah, it's, uh, voiceover is fun because you can just really go big. One role that literally still to this day breaks my heart. Um, I auditioned to be Alice for a Disney project and it was so top secret they, they wouldn't tell me what it was. I ended up booking it, which is total dream come true. But three hours prior to booking that job, I had booked a role on That 70s Show. And at the time, That 70s Show was like the number one TV show on air. And w my agent had closed that deal and they filmed at the exact same time. So once a deal is closed, you can't back out on it. So I had to turn down being Alice in Wonderland. Well, I find out like six months later, it was to be Alice in Wonderland for the sing-along on the 50th anniversary DVD. I would have been like in the vault <laughs> for Disney as Alice, I literally was sobbing. Like, I was so upset. So, and still to this day, I've never played the character. Um, it's, like yeah. the, it's like the role that got away, <laughs> and it's the one role that I want to play. Goodness, 
Um, I'm really passionate about mental health. I'm a huge advocate for mental health. Um, our mental health is just as important as our physical health. Um, and there's such a stigma surrounding mental health, and there shouldn't be. You know, just like, you know, the past three years, uh, it's been about COVID. Our bodies can get sick. Your brain can get sick as well. And we should feel comfortable to talk about it. And we're getting there. You know, we're breaking those stigmas, but um, we still have a long way to go. Sure. So um, try to be someone where when you come up and meet me, it's a safe space. Um, it's a project I've been working on with Disney and Lucasfilm for about five years now. And we are finally able to make it happen. There was a delay there because of COVID, you know, the world shut down. Um, but it's a, a video series called Star Wars Mindful Matters. And they're just shorts. They're two to three minute videos. And I teach a Star Wars lesson. So there are moments in Star Wars that are actually in the story. That, you know, lessons from Yoda, sure. lessons from Luke Skywalker, lessons from Ahsoka Tano. And then pair those lessons with a clinically based mindfulness exercise. You think you're training to be a Jedi, but you're also learning a, a breathing exercise. But I'm more motivated by fandom, so I'm more apt to do it if I think I'm training to be a Jedi, than if somebody just tells me to do a breathing exercise. They're already in all of Walt Disney World resorts. So if you stay at a Walt Disney World resort, you can go to Disney On Demand and the videos are there. We're getting them into hospitals, specifically children's hospitals and, and schools. So it's a huge passion project of mine. Now that's a fun chat, but there's more. Check out these other interviews and more fun stuff on Funko Fun TV.